Hello and welcome to the Empire or Expanded Follow the Republic 0.6 patch overview. In this video we're going to broadly talk about the major changes that came to the mod in version 0.6, which has released today on the Steam Workshop, and will hopefully release in a couple days on Mod Database, once we're sure any hotfixes are out of the way. If you are already subscribed on the Steam Workshop, then the game will automatically update. If you are not, there's going to be a link to both Mod Database and the Steam Workshop version of the game in the description. While there have been dozens of different changes and bug fixes, if not hundreds, there were two major focuses for this version of the mod. The first was space rebalancing, and the second was optimization. We'll briefly talk about optimization first, then the space reworks, and then we'll talk about some of the other changes that came with this version. As many of you noticed, the galactic level performance in 0.5 wasn't great. There was a lot of lag, especially on the larger maps. This primarily came down to the pathfinding calculations that the AI had to make. If you have played Thrawn's Revenge, our post Enor mod before, the changes that we have made in 0.6 have brought the performance a lot more in line with that. When there are larger individual factions, there's always going to be a little bit more. However, uh, you should see up to several times the number of frames that you would be getting in the previous build. So even the largest map should now be playable for pretty much everyone, though we still do have the three different sizes of the progressive map to make sure that people, even with lower end PCs, should have something that goes pretty smoothly for them. Some other changes have been made behind the scenes to reduce the amount of lag that happens between weeks. So when you transition from like week one to week two, that's when things like influence are all recalculated, which used to give uh, a second or so of a hitch but now that's been smoothed out a lot more uh, because it's updating less and only updating things it absolutely has to. On the tactical level, we've combined a lot of fighter squadrons into groups of uh, one, two, three, or even half squadrons, which overall should reduce the number of individual squadrons that are being tracked without reducing the number of fighters. And this should have a net positive impact on CPU usage on the tactical level as well. Uh, there weren't that many people reporting performance problems on that level, uh, but it should run even better now. As I mentioned, the second major thing that we did for this version was at least the beginnings of the major space overhauls. This has involved rebalancing and restatting every single space unit in the mod. It's also involved changing the way that projectile and damage and armor types all interact. Uh, so I can't really give a rundown of exactly what happened to every ship because again, every single ship was restatted from scratch. Space combat should feel a lot more fluid now. Uh, ships should feel a bit hardier, especially larger ships, uh, while still making sure that uh, ships of any class range have a clear role in the fleet instead of just being collections of different weapon types. There's still more to be done on this in the future, uh, like we're only getting started on ability so far, but there should be a significant improvement to how space battles feel. This has also involved changing the pop cap on the tactical level to 300, but that is solely so we can rescale within it. Uh, for example, Lucre Hulks now take up uh, the Lucre Hulk battleships take up 98 pop cap, uh, so it's not really doubling the pop cap or more than doubling from 120 to 300. It's that uh, on the top end you should still be seeing similar amounts of ships, but it gives us more room to give ships different pop cap stats and play around with things like that in the middle. So again, it shouldn't impact the number of total ships you're seeing, but the actual number you're seeing will be different and there's more room to play with shift within that. This has involved not just the in-battle stats of the units but also uh, changes to how we calculate pop cap, how we distribute fighter loadouts, and uh, cost. We are not touching build times very much quite yet. Uh, there's going to be some changes to how shipyards work on the galactic level and when we do that we'll be tackling the build times for units because it'll have a pretty big impact on when and how you can build units. It's hard to overstate how prominent these space rework changes have been, uh, but you can probably see in some of the background footage a little bit of what's going on with that. But there, again, it, it's very difficult to give an exact rundown. There's a lot more documentation within the unit tooltips that you'll be able to see while in game. So it gives a rundown of the weapon and damage stats of the ships as well as some other information. So you should have a much easier time figuring out what units are used for, what they're armed with, what they're good for and it should make it a bit simpler to 
figure out what your options are when building your fleet comp. So the choices come down to uh, clear options about what you're able to build rather than uh, trying to throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. On top of these two major focuses, there have of course been other significant changes going on. Honest has still been working on more voiceovers for all the units, so you should see a lot more of that, especially on the CIS space side for this release. Uh, this is the kind of thing that's going to keep going on for the next few releases, and we'll have a bit more with every release that comes out. We'll probably also hotfix in uh, some changes for the CIS fighters as well as the Providence because right now all the CIS fighters use the Tri-Fighter VO and the Providence may have one or two lines that doesn't that don't quite fit right now. Uh, but again, this is the kind of thing that will be expanded on over every release that we do. We haven't been super focused on adding new content for this particular release because of all the reworks and uh, the polish that was kind of the focus here, but we did split the Lucra Hawks into... Uh, two new classes, or rather the former Lucra Hulk battleship into uh, Lucra Hulk battle carrier and Lucra Hulk battleship. Mr. Puerto Rican has also finished the CR-25 lander, so uh, now the landers should be split between CR-25s and CR-20s for the Republic. This is another thing that's going to be added and expanded on more as we go through releases for both factions. Uh, the Ada 2 Actus model has been redone and also acts as a proper lander for the Jedi heroes, so they're no longer being dropped off in tiny CR-20s. On top of that, there have been three new heroes added. Sate Pestage is now in as a Republic economy hero to kind of fill the same role that Newt Gunray does for the CIS. Uh, and for the CIS, we've added Jizar uh, Delso, who is acquirable in-game after... Dooku and either Duaningo or Admiral Trench die if you are 10 weeks into Era 4. So just an extra bit of narrative there for the new hero. As well as another Munificent hero, Captain Harsel, who spawns if you start any of the progressive GCs in Era 4. Those of you who follow the channel may recognize him as a character who showed up in our Edge of Despair tabletop series. He is from the Fantasy Flight Games Edge of the Empire uh, pre-made stories. Because of some of the other changes that are going on with the scripting framework for the mod, we have temporarily disabled the Neutron Star as a buildable unit from the Order 65 branch, but more will be coming with both Order 65 and 66 within future releases, and the Neutron Star will be added back once that is finished. On the visual side, there have been some rework started on space projectiles and particles. You can see the beginning bits of that right now. Uh, the main thing so far has been working on uh, turbo lasers and ion cannons, uh, but there will be more work to things like missiles, uh, explosions, which you can see there's one new one that's kind of the, the bare bones start on editing them, uh, but a lot of that will be changing over the next couple releases as well. Uh, we've updated the instant action map, where before the lighting was a bit weird, now it's on a map that was based on the Rishi Galactic Conquest map, so it should look a bit better. We've added a few more features to that mode as well. Uh, this is the fleet builder where you're able to pit ships against each other to sort of test them. Uh, now there's a target dummy that you can spawn uh, that will give a better idea of how things work against different uh, damage types. So you can just test the damage output of units that way. You can also change which faction your units are spawning for. So it's possible to have things like Venator versus Venator, mirror matches like that. I already mentioned the Ada 2 Actus visual update that Bob did. On top of that, we have a new model for the DP-20, the Marauder Cruiser. Uh, there's also a new model for the Z-95, including a new clone Z-95 is in. The Diamond Cruiser has had a retexture as well as a few edits to the mesh. And we're getting closer to the point where things like the Providence will be getting a visual update as well, though it hasn't been done yet for this version. There are two new Legion skins in the mod, so these are the ones that the clone troopers use if they're deployed after a hero is already on the ground. For this release, we have added the 187th with Mace Windu and the 327th with Ayla Secura. Other fairly minor visual changes have been done as well, like a new engine targeting reticle and the faction shadow blobs, which are basically the selection circles. Those have been updated. And again, there's also been a ton of other bug fixes on top of all that. Just wanted to give you a general rundown of what the focuses have been. The next version, 0.7, should be more content focused, uh, though hopefully the shipyard reworks will be coming for that. Though for the next few weeks, we're mostly going to be focusing on getting the 2.3.6 release done for Thrawn's Revenge, since it's been a while since we've had a major patch for that mod. In either case, the link to the Steam Workshop and mod database are in the description. The mod database build will hopefully be up within the week. 
It's a pretty significant change from last version, but we hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and if you are interested in seeing some of the mod development as it happens, you can subscribe here. I do preview playthroughs of versions while they're in development, talking about the sort of general process of that. But other than that, hope you enjoy the mod, and hope to see you next time.